always been a big fan of arcades. There's nothing quite like going into a huge room filled with cabinets of varying bit crushed beeps and boops. When I was a kid, my parents would sometimes take me to arcades, and I always thought that they were the coolest things. Heck, I even still go to arcades now! See, that's me and Austin play games at an arcade. Sure, when I was a kid, it was a different time, and games weren't as accessible or affordable to me, but that didn't stop me from going as much as I possibly could. And recently, arcades have made somewhat of a comeback in the form of barcades along with the retro market. And that got me thinking about arcades, and in particular, arcades in video games. So... Top 10 Arcades in Video Games Top 10 Arcades in Video Wait, I said that already. Stop doing this part. This is, I said the thing already. Come on. Welcome back to Animal Crossing, a place where... Oh, oh god, no! No, the weeds! The weeds! I fixed it. Oh, there's more. Animal Crossing is fun! Well, not picking weeds, but all the other things that you can do. Most of the time, you'll probably just be fishing, collecting bugs, or talking to the locals. I think that one of the best things about this game is that you can pretty much do whatever you want, whenever you want. You know, it's actually kind of silly when you think about it, this game is about paying off your debt. You wouldn't think that would be very fun. But I think that most of my enjoyment from this game comes from the fact that I just collect everything. Soon, soon I will have a 100% complete catalog. <laughs> Don't judge me, never judge. In the first Animal Crossing, one of my favorite features were some of the unique items that you could collect. Ones that you can't really find anywhere else. And so, I set out on one mission and one mission only. To play games. Within games. So I built this arcade. Here we go, tour time. Right over here, Zelda. Right here, Mario. You wanna gamble? I got you covered. Come over here for a second. Yeah, that's right, full refreshments. Coffee, soda, snacks. Right over here is my picture of Tom Nook so I don't forget my roots. And to top it all off, I'm proud to announce that this arcade is all eco-friendly. It's powered by this hamster. I named him Squiggles. Yeah, that's right, I painstakingly built my very own arcade room in Animal Crossing. The very fact that this is possible in this game is a novelty in its own right. There are so many games around in Animal Crossing, some of them aren't even available without cheating nowadays. There's even some really good games in here like Punch-Out, Zelda, Super Mario Brothers, Wario's Woods. The value is kind of insane, actually. Made only better by the fact that Nintendo would never do something like this now, considering the current state of the video game market with Virtual Console and all the things like that. Heck, I mean, they even just now announced a new mini console for $60. So I guess the lesson here is enjoy what you got because Nintendo might take it away from you and make you spend more money on it. Cool. Beavis and <laughs> Butthead. <laughs> Honestly, I can't really say that I've seen too much of this show. I just kind of remember it being a weird thing growing up. It was a show that was on MTV of all places. This doesn't music. It's a lie. <laughs> That's us, dude. Yeah. <laughs> It's one of those ridiculously hard, almost bullet hell type games with cheap enemies that come out of nowhere. It's very arcadey. Pardon the pun. Speaking of arcade though, there is a level called Turbo Mall 2000. You traverse a mall made up of different stores and locations. You'll fend off against falling grocery bags, mall security dogs, and an unhealthy amount of snakes trying to eat you. Where'd this mall get all these snakes? You even go through a piranha-infested water tank, and might I add, unrealistic because of how big it is, plus the fact that I'm pretty sure most pet stores don't carry piranhas. Throughout the level, you'll be scrounging for quarters through change machines and phone booths if you know that you can do that. Usually, you'd use all these coins on food because of how much damage you'd be taking, but if you hold out long enough, you'll eventually get to the arcade. There's lots of machines here, but unfortunately, you can't play them all. There is one cabinet that you can play, though. Butt fighter. Never mind the fact that it's just a simplistic two-button fighter with reskins of Beavis and Butthead. I honestly just thought that the idea of being able to play on an arcade machine in a video game was cool enough. There is actually a second game that you can play, but you have to be in two-player mode, and I was playing by myself. 
Butt Fighter, though! Great game. Actually, it's a terrible game. Retro City Rampage is a somewhat remixed idea of the early Grand Theft Auto days, when all the games used to take place from a bird's eye perspective. Throw in a lot of video game and pop culture references and humor, and you have a pretty chaotic and arcadey romp. Yay, I've always wanted to be graded on how much I could murder. That's my favorite. In the southern part of the city at this location, there is in fact an arcade. There's a few machines that are playable at the same time as being references to other brands. There's a fully contained and playable Super Meat Boy game that has you dashing towards the end of the levels, avoiding traps and collecting bandages. There's an 8-bit rendition of Bit Trip Runner that I found to be actually hard. There's even an alpha build of this game within the game. Oh my god, that's so freaking meta. And then there's this. I don't really know what to say about this one. It's... It's there. Apparently, it's reference to Epic Mealtime, the YouTube channel. Alright, cool, now we know. My favorite thing about this arcade is that it's not there just for show. It's clearly there so that you can go in and play games. Some of which are not easy by any means. For example, if you collect all of the bandages in the Super Meat Boy arcade cabinet, not just most of them, every... Single. One. Then you will actually unlock Super Meat Boy as a playable character in the free mode. Now I can play as Super Meat Boy and take lots of drugs and have weapons and do stuff. Wait. Splatoon! It's been quite a while since I've touched this game. I bought it right away when it came out, and then it didn't have the things that I wanted in it that they said that were coming later, and then I stopped playing. Money well spent. Regardless of your feelings on Splatoon, it's definitely grown a lot since it came out. There's a lot more weapons that people kill me with. There's a lot more maps that people kill me on. And there's a lot more clothes to get now that are locked away from me because I didn't participate in the game. What is this game? Have you guys just been non-stop playing since this game came out? Get a life! I mean, good job. I'm proud of you. One of my favorite things is the fact that the Miiverse is incorporated into the World Hub. Now I can read quality posts at any time, like... Finally got out of school. My mom found out I ate all the... Well, what is it? What did you eat? What did you eat? Oh, she ate biscuits. She ate all the biscuits. Oh, hey, look, there's an arcade machine in this game. And what do you know, you can play games on it. Now, normally playing mini games is reserved for when you're waiting for servers to fill up, but you can play mini games on an arcade machine in the World Hub. The only game that you start out with is Squid Jump. Jump around. Jump up, jump up, and get down! But don't get too far down- No, 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 no! But if you have all the amiibos, and you unlock all of the challenges, and complete them, you will unlock more minigames for your arcade machine. Now you can play Splatoon classics like... Squid Ball! Squid Racer! And you can't forget about Squid Beats! I don't even feel like I wasted my time! Why? Why did you do this, Nintendo? Why did you do this? Donkey Kong 64 this case. Donkey Kong. Okay. Man, it has been a long time since I've played this glorious collectathon game. Well, actually, it's been a while since I've played any collectathons at all. Wait, 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 wait. There's a story to this game? I don't remember that. Oh my god, how long does it take for you to tell me that Donkey Kong lost all his bananas? We know it's gonna happen! It happens every time! You know what? I realized something today. It only took me 17 years to realize that this character is actually really annoying. In this game, there is actually a few hidden arcade games. This may be the first Nintendo game to do something like this. I mean, we all know about Animal Crossing now because, I mean, it came before this. You, you remember, like, a little bit ago? But this? This was... 
revolutionary. Because in the Frantic Factory level, you can find a replica of the original Donkey Kong machine. I think the coolest thing about this is that it's built into the progression of the game. You have to get the proper skill with Donkey Kong in order to activate the machine, and once you do, you have to beat the original Donkey Kong in order to get a golden banana. That includes all the different levels, even though they're out of order. One of the coolest things about this is that once you beat the game, you can challenge the game again on a harder mode. Princess Pauline, we all know the true damsel in distress is Nintendo themselves. We all know that they've just been truly, truly helpless this entire time. Have you ever wanted to go to an arcade? Going to arcades is fun and all, but that requires moving. Well, have you ever wanted to own an arcade? Uh... Well, no, you can! With Anarchy Arcade! Whoa! Yeah, that's right, Anarchy Arcade. The game where you can literally take your computer and whatever games and links you have on it and turn it into a virtually interactive arcade. That's not possible, you say? Don't believe us? Just listen to these celebrity reviews. Oh, wow. Unbelievable. I'm, I'm in an arcade on my computer. Now I don't even have to move to go to an arcade, and it's not even sad! Anarchy Arcade is satanic hell, Satan! Now we can build our very own arcade! All we have to do is choose a location and get started! Okay, creepy stage... No thanks... Small apartment... Oh, I got enough of that in real life... Garage... Uh, that's a... that's a no. No, 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 none of these will do at all! Peach's Castle?! Might be a little overkill. How about a romantic cabin in the woods? Perfect. Now all we have to do is decorate and... Ta-da! Wait a second, I use that sound effect. After spending just a few hours, I have a virtual arcade space featuring games from my Steam library and game collection. I must admit that messing around in this game was loads of fun, and the entire point of this game is to create virtual spaces that you and your friends can enjoy with things you actually own. Essentially, the game is just one huge linking hub, but imagine if all those links and things were being portrayed in a physical space. Well, a virtually physical place. The cool thing is, is that all of this stuff actually works. Well, except for freaking impossible creatures. Look at this, it's broken. All of the cabinets load the proper games and you can even watch videos if you want to. So naturally, I made a YouTube room. This isn't weird. Now I can claim all of these videos as my own through a third party. This isn't Brutal Moose. This is my Let's Play Anarchy Arcade series. Get wrecked, nerds! This is all mine! It's all mine! <laughs> Stardew Valley is definitely one of my favorite games to come out in a long time. I mean, go figure, I've talked about it a couple times already on this channel. So without sounding too much like a broken record, let's jump right in. In Stardew Valley, there is a tavern. Wow. It's not just for hanging out with your neighbors and getting drunk, either. If you go to the right side, there's a small arcade room with two arcade cabinets that you can play on. So you know what time it is, it's time to get drunk and play video games. Just like in real life. Do real. <laughs> Let's start things off with the second machine, Junimo Kart. This one is only playable once you've gotten the Skeleton Key, which is only available on the 120th level of the mines. It's just a simplistic rail cart minigame where the object is to get to the end of each stage without losing all of your lives. The Junimo Kart goes at different speeds on different levels, and it's actually pretty difficult to get to the end of some of the stages. Nothing too fancy, it's just one of the games that you can play. The main game that's available right away, however, is called Journey of the Prairie King. It's an overhead skill-based western shooter complete with power-ups, a weapon shop, and bosses. The object of the game is to essentially stay alive for as long as possible. The enemies get a lot more numerous and a lot tougher, so you have to spend your upgrades wisely. It's a lot easier said than done. Admittedly, beating this game sometimes just comes down to pure luck. And coincidentally, I did in fact figure out that luck does have a part in it. Like your actual luck stat in the game. So if you're having a hard time beating this game like I was, just wait until a day where your luck is very high, and then on top of that, consume some food that gives you even more luck. Now I'll be able to get all the power-ups and become an unstoppable killing machine! <laughs> oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Oh, 
Aw, man! I think that one of the coolest and most rewarding things about beating the games is that if you do manage to beat them, you get the arcade cabinets as a prize. Now I can display these cabinets proudly in my own home and impress my friends. Or in this case, my wife, Penny. She doesn't seem all that impressed, though, so you know what? Maybe I'll put it on her side of the room. Take that, Penny! Or better yet, I'll replace my daughter with video games. Just put one there and another there. Perfect! And look, she doesn't even mind! Jimmy freaking Hopkins! The star of, I'd say, cult classic rockstar game, Bully. A game that's almost like the PG-13 version of Grand Theft Auto. Bully is a bit different. If you've never played it before like me, you star as Jimmy Hopkins, a new student at Bullworth Academy. A chaotic school filled with bullies and hoodlums around every corner. And when I say around every corner, I mean it. This is like literally the first 10 seconds of the game and I'm already getting bullied. Leave me alone. All I did was walk by. In order to do well in the world of bully, you'll have to complete missions, attend and skip classes, prank kids, and beat up the occasional bully. And all the while managing your time efficiently so you don't piss off your seniors. Also, don't forget about the ladies. Bully is definitely a unique game, and I'm not really sure why I never got around to playing it before now. Running around the school and doing all manner of negligent behavior is weirdly more engaging than you'd think. One of the best parts of any Rockstar games are all the personal touches that they put into the surrounding world to make it feel more alive. And Bully is no different. After completing the first chapter of the game, you'll unlock the area outside of the school, and if you steal a bike and make your way around the town, you'll eventually stumble upon the carnival. You can do all sorts of cool things here, like ride rides or even visit a fun house, but the main reason we're here is, of course, the arcade machines. Back in the boys' dorm room, there is one arcade machine that you can play on called... FUTURE STREET RACE 2165! It's a, it's a game where you race around in circles and race people. Once you're at the carnival, though, there is a tent where you can redeem your tickets from playing games. Inside that tent, tucked away on the side, is a row of arcade cabinets, and they're all playable. There's a 3D version of the racing game that we just played. There's this game called Con Sumo, where the object of the game is to make your sumo fighter as fat as possible by eating healthy food. Uh oh, watch out, sumo guy, avoid the bad food! Look at the high scores. The top two players are fat. Rockstar, ladies and gentlemen. This one is my favorite game, it's called Nutshots. You're, you're a fl you're flying squirrel who shoots nuts at bees. Don't forget about Monkey Fling, the game where you throw your poop at spiders who are, are, are coming down. They're coming down. Thank you guys so much for joining me. We had so much fun here in, in Bully playing these video games within video games. You know what, screw it, I'm gonna play the monkey game some more. It's the start of one of the grandest adventures ever created! Final Fantasy VII! It's a good game. I didn't catch your name. Because I didn't say it, it's Bumbus though. Final Fantasy VII is definitely one of my favorite Final Fantasy games. I think that Square, to this day, has still had trouble competing with this game's success and admiration. It's actually quite surreal to be playing this game again. I'm noticing so many more things I would have never caught growing up. I also identify more with the characters and their problems. If anything, it makes me more interested in seeing the game's remake and how it turns out. Especially if the main character's name is Bumbus instead of Cloud. They should probably retcon that. This game was actually the initial inspiration for this list, and one of the best showcases of arcades in video games. About 10 hours into the game, you'll set sail across the sea and travel to a town called Corel. Wait, or is it Coral? Or is it Carl? Coral! Coral! One cinematic train right away and you're at the Gold Saucer. Essentially, a ridiculously huge theme park. Disneyland? What's that? Six Flags? What? No! Two words! Gold? Saucer. Saucier for the more advanced, okay? This place is filled with a metric ton of stuff that you can do. It's no one trick pony. One of the best parts about this place is that it adds more things as you continue throughout the game. You can gamble on chocobo races, go on trippy roller coaster rides, battle in the arena when there isn't dead people there. 
And of course, you can go to the arcade. Now, as I've said before, they add a few things to the arcade as you go along. But right out of the gate, you get access to a bunch of different things. You can arm wrestle, shoot baskets. Well, you could try to shoot baskets. I wasn't very good at that. There's even this virtual fighting rock, paper, scissors machine. And you can revisit some of the minigames that you've played up to this point here. The weirdest and probably most memorable machine for me, though, is this Mog machine. It's more of a story than anything. The only interactivity that you have throughout this game is feeding the Mog. That's it. That's the whole game. But as the story unfolds, you slowly realize that you're helping the Mog get laid. That's the game. That's the whole game. There they go. What did I tell you? Best of luck to both of you, Mog and Meg. May you have lots and lots of healthy Mogs. Something tells me that's not gonna be a problem. Grand Theft Auto. <laughs> If it were up to me, I'd include GTA 5 on the list. Usually Rockstar is pretty good at including minigames or arcade games in their products, and GTA 5 is no exception. Except for when it comes to the arcade game part. Yes, total shit. Why does this guy get to have all the fun? He's not even playing the game. Look, he's just on the menu. Hey. Hey there, bro. I'm gonna let you in on a secret. You gotta insert the coin to play the game. Kaboom! You just got pwned, my friend. Well, but there's no arcade games to play in this game, I guess I'll just throw myself off a helicopter and kill myself. Boy, this sure is taking a while. There we go. Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. At this point, it's almost like a weird alternate dimension of GTA 5. One where the pixels aren't very good. Things has changed while here. TJ, watch your back right here, man. One thing that this game does have, though, besides Carl's amazing fashion sense, is arcade games. You'll find them around bars, thrift stores, and clubs, and you can even play some games at Carl's house. I don't think any one place has all the arcade games, so I had to go around to a couple different locations. The 69 cent thrift store had an arcade cabinet called Go Go Space Monkey, but then you go up to it and play the game, and it's called They Crawled From Uranus. I can't wait! Well, no one said they were gonna be that good. This one's really just a wave-based shooter. There really isn't much to it. Go around in a circle, shoot all the enemies in waves, and... Don't die. The next one is in the same store, and it's called Duality. Whoa, Duality? That sounds awesome! It's not, it's not awesome. The rest of the games can be found at this club called Alhambra. That is, once you're done showing off your sweet, sweet dance moves. If you head to the back corner of the club, you'll find two more cabinets that you can play on. One of them is just duality again, but the other one is called Let's Get Ready to Bumble. You play as a bee, and you collect the flowers. It's the best game I've ever played. Thank you so much for watching my video. I hope you guys liked it. If you did, please share it with your friends and let me know what games you would have chosen down in the comment section down below. Socials. Follow them. I, I stream now on Twitch. You can follow my Twitch. And if you just can't wait for more videos, I got two more videos for you right there. Donkey Kong bootleg games and top 10 drunks in video games. That's it for me. I'm going now. I'm... That's... I'm going.